And there's also um, change. The other thing I subtracted out there was our occupational therapists and our physical therapists. We've always considered them as contracted services, and so they've been in the 5300 account or where purchase services would be. And um, we've been informed by the Labor Department that since they look like an employee, get paid like an employee, they are employees. So we have moved them into this area, um, into the salaries and wages. But I didn't include those because they were, they were already in our budget. They just moved from one line item to another, and I thought that wasn't uh, presenting a fair picture to say that this increased by another $230,000 because we added OTPT, because we actually added them there and subtracted them there. So they're not included there. Um, so there are no reductions in employees. The percentage represent, or these numbers represent current employees. Correct. Then there are reductions in other places that, re that reduce that, that teacher increase loan 2.9 right. to 1.26? Right. Okay. So, and that's not, the, not only the teacher increase right there. Um, overall. So, I'm, uh, as I said, purchase services includes the magnet school tuition, all of the tuitions, and the uh, transportation, but not only special ed transportation, it would include field trip transportation and um, athletic transportation and all of that, and that's 2.3. So, you can see right out of the gate our obligations uh, in terms of special education, transport, uh, transporting students. Uh, and um, paying salaries and wages is 4.75% of our current, uh, over our current budget. Um, and uh, again, I'm not including everything here. These are the, the big areas. Uh, in discretionary new programs, that would include the board's request for all day kindergarten, extended day, and extended year. That comes up to uh, $286,000. And you'll see that I did not do that in all seven schools. Uh, across the board, uh, and, and, and for all day K, I looked at the tier three schools, and I'll explain that in a moment. So that's a little over a half percent. Uh, new staffing requests, I do have uh, a list of uh, partial staffing requests. It's, it's not a huge list, and that's about two-thirds of a percent over the current year's budget. And technology, you can see, is just about one and a half percent over the current year budget. Um, that's an area that we truly need to move forward in uh, so our students can uh, get an education that will compete with them. So even if we if we looked at all this, this comes to just over uh, 7%, about 7.5%, and I think that's uh, approximately where our, uh, our budget is. So looking again at the uh, contractual obligations, the salaries uh, and increases, this is the same number on the previous page, 1.26. I did pull out pension. Um, so you could see that um, we learn in uh, December and January what our annual pension is. We uh, forecast it for the next year, but it's really our auditors who tell the town uh, and the school district what our obligation is to the pension. And so we, we do try to target that, but um, sometimes we're off a little bit. And so we needed to add 46000 to that. So that's that first part of the previous slide, the 2.45%. Uh, the next breaks down that uh, purchase services a little bit more. Transportation, you can see, is $185,000 uh, of an increase. And we do have a brand new contract uh, that we're getting things out of, and we, there are increases uh, in there as well. Uh, tuition to other local education agencies, so other public schools, uh, $291,000. That's based on the current snapshot. We have 61 students in our district who have been placed outside of our uh, district. Uh, we did end the year with 35 last year, and we are now up to 61. Magnet schools, you know that the board budgeted uh, $450,000. Uh, right now, our bill is at $558,000. And so, uh, to be uh, safe, we have increased it, not just the $108,000 that we're short this year, but we've increased it by $200,000. Uh, Non-public, again, this is special education students or students placed by agencies. Uh, this is the increase, and again, it's based on the current status of our students. That's the only way we can do this. It can go up, it can go down. And so based on the current uh, status, we need $435,000 additional, and that's the 2.3. Our extended programs, these are the programs um, board members asked for. 
Um, we tried to minimize the impact here, and certainly you can see that extended day program, uh, we can do it, uh, not a full five day a week program, but we can do it for um, a 20th of a percent, which is uh, true, actually, no, that's even lower, isn't it? Um, yeah, it is a 20th of a percent. The, um, if we use our current staff, both reading and special education, and flex their hours, so on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, they would come in, let's say, an hour and a quarter later, and stay an hour and a quarter later, then that would provide extra time after school for our students. So in addition to the time they're already in the building, it would provide them with uh, opportunities for small group instruction. It would be tier two instruction, and of course we use the tiers one, two, and three quite a lot. Um, excuse me, tier one instruction is what goes on in the classroom for every student or any student, moving a seat, um, you know, providing uh, extra help individually. The tier two is small group instruction, and tier three is really one-on-one -on -one instruction uh, for students who truly need it. Um, we're looking at transportation. That would be three days a week. This is K through 12. So we would be looking to provide transportation. I worked with our transportation company. It actually came to 24,000 something, so I rounded up um, the, uh, to see what we could do. I'm thinking a bus would leave the high school, go to the middle school. That bus could then, um, or there could be then buses that go from there to all five elementary schools. So the high school and middle school kids can get off at the elementary schools or based on the students who are in the program at that time, because you'd want to change this every six to eight weeks, assess how the kids are doing, invite more students to participate in the after school program, um, and you would change your, uh, your bus route each time. We have VersaTrans now, and so our bus company can do that, input the uh, 30 so kids that are staying after, create a new bus route, and so the children will go home. And our high school and middle school kids can either get off at the elementary schools and walk home, or they could hop on those buses and actually get a ride as close as they want. We would not provide them with door-to-door -door, um, service like we would the others. An extended year program, we're looking for a four-week program, four days a week. That's modeled after what we have now. Um, it's, it's not ideal. We would love to extend it and have it even more. But we're looking at an enrichment program at the elementary school. Uh, I know Mr. DeVellis, I was speaking with him earlier today, and he said, uh, do you think we can put out uh, to teachers if they want to do something uh, this summer and what they might want to do? And I said, absolutely. Let's, let's get those ideas and we can bring them back to the board. So we might have a teacher who wants to um, explore the world of water for a week, uh, or uh, the stars, or um, become an engineer or um, become an author. Um, so we're going to try to have opportunities for kids over the summer that they can truly extend their learning in addition to the remediation um, that we would invite students to participate in. So um, the real cost um, there is the staffing and supplies that's higher than it is right now. I think right now we have oh, between twenty and thirty thousand dollars, twenty and twenty-five thousand dollars in our regular summer school budget, and that only supports elementary. This is in addition to that. Uh, at the high school and the middle school, that is, those are self-supporting programs for remediation. Students and parents pay for those. We have many students that cannot do that, cannot pay for that. So we have included that in this, as well as um, some enrichment programs. So a, a one-week camp in whatever topic a, a teacher would like to uh, offer this summer. Additionally, I was working with Mr. Griffin earlier today and we are looking at, uh, we, we're joining, I signed uh, today to join the interdistrict um, opportunities over the summer. Um, they're phenomenal opportunities, uh, an opportunity to go study at UConn or Western and um, <coughs> become an engineer or a scientist, look at uh, biology, chemistry, um, there are, uh, become an author. There are, there are so many wonderful programs that if we join with CREC, our regional service center, um, our students have opportunities for these. So we're interested in creating a huge brochure that shares everything we've got to offer in the summer and all the opportunities in addition to what we have here for our students to uh, engage in. Again, it's uh, about a fifth of a percent uh, of our budget, of our current budget. So that's the increase there. So it, it's not a uh, high cost item uh, for us. Full day kindergarten. Um, I've talked about tier schools. Oh, I'm sorry. Whoops. Sorry. Got it. 
the extended day and extended year um, are not programs for all students. Is that right? We, would, we actually talked about that. Um, we would not want to prohibit students from doing that, um, from being there, but there would be students who would be invited. Um, at the middle and high school, um, you might target some students, but it would be open to anyone um, who wanted to. At the high school, it's already open to anyone who wants to stay to do Novanet classes and things like that or, or work with people. So it would be a, um, a teacher. There's an increase in, uh, in staffing, which I'll show you in a moment, that, that addresses the high school issue. But no, um, we certainly would target students, but we would not want to keep students out either. Not target, we would invite students to participate, who we really feel yeah. need that. But no one would be left out. No, but it's not enrichment in, during the school year. At least that's the program that we've been working on. I thought the board's intention was to extend learning time for all students. And this is the program that, that we've come up with to offer that. If you're looking to extend the school day for everyone, that's certainly I can, I can come up with that as well. If you want to extend I just, the school I just day. Thought I thought learning good. opportunities, and these were opportunities for students. That was my interpretation. I'm sorry. What, was it mine? But that I may have misunderstood the board's intention. Um, and flexing staff means that there will be the, the staff who flexes in later that, that will leave gaps from the beginning of the day. How will those be filled? Um, by our current teachers uh, and our current staff. And on Monday and Friday, they would be there to, uh, during the regular times uh, so that they would be able to provide that as well. So all-day kindergarten, um, you know, is an expensive uh, proposition. Uh, there is not much room in any of our schools for this. We discussed that uh, last spring uh, a little bit. Uh, this, what this would do, two and a half uh, staff members would increase and give us three full-day uh, sections at Maple Street and three at Northeast School. Uh, we need furniture and supplies for two additional classrooms. Uh, neither school has room uh, for, for these classrooms, although I think both principals are thinking about how to do that. And uh, it would mean putting uh, both art and music on a cart, uh, most likely, in both schools at this point. Um, we already have art on a cart at, uh, at Northeast. It would then mean uh, adding uh, music on a cart as well, which is not the best situation um, for those particular uh, courses. Uh, it would be somewhat similar at the other schools. These are the two Tier 3 schools in terms of our Alliance grant. We have uh, Tier 1, 2, and 3 schools. And uh, our, our Tier 3 schools, uh, we think that was the, the place to start, see how it goes, see how we can, uh, we're not even sure how much we're going to save by no transportation in the middle of the day. Um, right now we have uh, crossover time, so we have afternoon students coming in at 10.30 and morning students going home at about noon. So we have two runs in the middle of the day. Um, and so we have to be looking at that and then move ahead and then the next uh, school would be uh, Center Road School and then after that would be Lake Street and Skinner Road School who are our Tier 1 elementary schools. 